ain't your mama's normal scouting video. So this is an example of what I call like the green carpet effect, where when you look at a map on some pines, and it basically looks like a green carpet. There's nothing there, you can't see gaps through the canopy or anything. And you come out here, and it is a barren, buckless, deerless wasteland. There's just nothing in there for a deer. That's not to say that you might not see a deer coming through here every once in a while, but there's just nothing in here to draw them. There's no food, there's no cover, and there's no water. It's wide open underneath. The pines are thick enough in the canopy that they're blocking all the sunlight. So there's no sunlight getting down to the forest floor. So you, all you get is very shade tolerant species. It can be tempting to hunt it because it's open and you're sitting here with a rifle and you can see all the way across this valley, but there's not really much to draw a deer in here. You know, maybe during the rut, a buck might happen to run a doe through a saddle that pops out into this stuff, but that's really about the only time I could picture seeing a deer in here. But now we're gonna go to some good pines with good cover and good food. So here's an example of some good pines. These don't have the carpet effect when you look at it on the map. You can actually see little gaps through the canopies, like maybe these were thinned at some point. And since you can see those gaps, sunlight is getting to the forest floor and you wind up with something like this where you've got all these different plants in here, you've got different hardwood species, you've got young pines growing up, and you've got a ton of underbrush, like this Bacaris hedge, this is really great for bedding. And then you've got, I don't know what these are called, but you can see how hard that's browsed. I mean, just eat up. And it's like that all through here. There's just so much food for them in here. And they're just walking through here and bedding and eating in this stuff. And uh, if you listen to our interview with Glenn Solomon, this is exactly what Glenn hunts. He comes out and he hunts terrain features basically inside of this stuff, where he's getting way up in one of these pines where he can see down into this bedding. And the deer are hidden here, you know, for the most part, unless you're 30 feet up in a pine. So this is what you want to look for when it comes to pines. I know you can't see as far in here, but if you get up in a tree, you can see down into it and it ends up being some really, really good hunting. When you're hunting pines in late season, uh, one of the main food sources, especially if there's not um, a whole lot of food like there is in this select cut piece, if uh, you're hunting property, um, whether it be public or private, is uh, full of pines and there's really not a whole lot as far as food, the vines that grow up these pine trees are killer in late season. Um, I've uh, seen a couple of bucks um, eating that stuff during late season. Don't forget about privet too. A lot of these um, areas along the creeks and stuff like that, the privet, especially if there's a big wind or like a rainstorm that comes through, uh, some of these little leaves will fall and hit the ground and they will tear those up. I've got some footage of both of those um, food sources in late season being hit by bucks. So uh, just something to be mindful of. If it's green, you know, in, in a uh, pine thicket, a lot of times they'll hit those things uh, during late season. I came back to an area that we first filmed and this little spot right here is um, overlooking a parking area. So we've got two beds right here really worn in and um, you can see just how worn in they are. There's one here and there's actually one right down the hill just uh, probably about 10 yards or so and they're just sitting here and they're overlooking this uh, parking area you know a lot of people will overlook these spots just because there's a destination that's further away and in their minds it's away from pressure but you can really be really really close to these uh, parking areas and access trails and, and find deer beds because they're just a little bit more overlooked than some of the other locations that are deeper uh, in the woods So right now, I'm just about 30 yards off the trail, and that would be my access to go to this greenfield and shooting house. Most everybody's attention is that the deer could be in that greenfield, or maybe like a destination food source, like if you're hunting public land, like some oaks or something like that, and they start easing through those areas. Um, 
and they don't really think about how close they could be to the trail watching your entrance to those places. Um, behind me you see the bed and I'm going to take you up here to where the shooting house is which is just a short little piece over here. It's only about 50 yards away and so what these deer are doing is they're monitoring your access but not only that once you get down here to this shooting house and let's say you climb up in there um, and say you're really quiet about the whole thing um, those deer in the evening what they're going to do is walk along this side hill so right here behind me is a shooting house and just off the hill there that's where the greenfield is these deer were back over here watching my entrance what they're going to do they're going to come from over here and they're basically going to walk right along on the downwind side and you got to think thermals too are playing uh, especially in the evening when they're hitting these food sources they're going to walk right off the hill there circle around and then come in to that food source so even if the wind is not really getting you the thermals from these areas are dropping and all of your scents going to be very concentrated in the evening those thermals are dropping and they're going right down there to where they're cutting this little hill right here you know to come in especially if uh especially if these um food sources are up on a hilltop all of those thermals are going to be rolling off that hill and they're going to know exactly what's either in that field or what may be around that field because of those thermals so the last thing i'm going to go over is uh access within the tent and what that means is um that you're just thinking about your access route uh, instead of going in and blowing out the deer um, they're typically going to be bedded in this uh, in this view it's going to be like a southeast wind they're going to be bedded on that northwest uh, facing slope and so all of your thermals and winds going to be heading that one direction so if you come in from the opposite direction then you're going to have most of that in your favor so once your thermals uh, start falling in the evening, usually that's going to happen about an hour or so before dark. And that's when the deer typically get up and they'll start moving, uh, you know, to a staging area or go to feed. In this example, your thermals are going to be pulled uh, back behind you uh, once, those, uh, once those evening thermals kick in. And they're going to fall to that creek and then they're going to go down that creek. So all of your scent should be going away from that deer and its entrance into that field. And this example, you know, this is just one example. There are all kinds of different scenarios and setups, but the one thing, you know, that you need to remember is where the deer come from, where is their trail, and is your scent gonna be pulled away from that trail once those thermals start falling? Okay. Bucks does. Bucks does. Okay. Kill spot. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna try to pop a willy. Pointing. Actually pointing with your finger. <laughs> <laughs> Here's some privet. <laughs> Let's try that again. <laughs> Mark.